Welcome to the Skeleton Report. I'm Mark Nathaniel Skelton, and today we're going to be discussing the steps of the dissertation process. So let's go ahead and get started. Now this is really in response to the warm reactions that I received on, uh, thank God, passing my dissertation proposal. Now that's just one step in this whole process of a dissertation. So this is for those who maybe have already completed a dissertation, to give you a little, a little nostalgia, or those that are interested in completing a doctorate program. This is like the capstone project of your studies, depending on what field you get in. And are those that are in the midst of it or approaching it and may like to have a better idea how it works. So what is a dissertation and how is it conducted? Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to keep it simple. It's the stages of dissertation projects. So you're, again, you're basically conducting a research and I'm going to use uh, the dissertation I'm working on to kind of help talk through some of these points. Um, basically, again, I don't know the way I'm saying this, it's like a Subway sandwich. You put it to get, you can put it together any way you really want, but these are the main ingredients. Okay, you gotta, you gotta develop a, you gotta develop a topic, you gotta um, secure, obtain a committee, and you gotta submit that proposal, which is like your literature review, the draft, conduct the research. So that's where you got to get your IRB approval and you're doing the methods, getting the data, finding the results, and then you got to defend the thesis. That's like the, the last boss on the video game. It's the last thing you need to do before you're um, solidified or certified and you can graduate. Uh, one thing I heard is you don't want to be all BD, which means all but dissertation. So getting your coursework done. But if you get all your coursework done and you don't have the dissertation done, you're still in there. So this is very important so let's go ahead and dive into it all right so we're going to keep it simple so again the first thing you want to do is develop the topic and like my mentor taught me in this field uh, you want to keep it practical you want to keep it something meaningful practicing you need to be able to do it something that meaningful and it makes sense that should be an area of interest to yours Okay, so again, you're prepared for this. You're writing papers throughout the, the school year programs and 12-page papers and six-page papers and doing mock in, um, research projects in that sense. So by the time you get to your third or fourth year, depending on your track, um, you're ready for this. And you should uh, be have given enough exposure through practicum and studies to maybe find an area of interest for you. So this is what you're really going to give yourself to. And this could take a year or more time frame. But the first thing you want to do is you want to develop that topic. Next, you want to secure a committee. So this is like your faculty and experts on the topic. And I think I'm going to let me talk about my project because I've heard some interest in it. And that can kind of lead us into step three, where you submit the proposal. So for my project, um, again, you know, what role does theology play? Now, this actually kind of sp spun off of a pre previous project. And this is that practicality piece that we're talking about and meaningfulness. Um, at my school, uh, again, when the vaccine first came out, um, the school was given a grant to conduct uh, listening tours. And so that's just focus groups You're going around talking to community partners uh, like I don't know, you just think in your mind like um, community centers or agencies and you're talking to the employees or those working there like luncheons about what are their um, feelings about the vaccine, willingness to get the vaccine or not get it. So, it's you know, there's no real agenda in the sense it's more just open dialogue. We want to hear from the community about how they feel about the vaccine. So humbled i was asked to be a part of that project along with other students as well and so for my experience um, during my time uh, with within these projects and these focus groups around the community of kcmo um, something something that came up regularly so again this is how my dissertation developed was this idea of like where you know there's a number of questions 
number of questions in the focus groups. And one of those was like, where's a safe place to get the vaccine? And one thing that repeatedly came up was churches. Churches would be a safe place, maybe a more welcoming place to receive the vaccine. So, and, and in particular, the grant too is interested in, in also um, learning from underrepresented groups, which are minority groups, in other words, that, you know, what are their opinions on willingness for getting the vaccine? So hearing that enough, you know, comb in some of the research, um, understanding that um, the my chair and committee members, for the most part, were part of that project previously. So here we, we got experts that was already working in it, already got that working relationship. Um, so then that the, the opportunity came up with a conversation around like, well, this could potentially be a dissertation project. So that's practical, all right? It's meaningful because, hey, you know, the, the COVID thing is going on at, at that time, it was around 2021, um, you know, right after the um, vaccine was made. So about a year out from the pandemic. And it's an area of interest because what I did, and this is, I spun it more so, okay, well, you know, I have an interest in theology. Again, went to a seminary school, master's program before this. Um, I'm interested in my community with the African-American community. COVID-19 is a newer thing. It's a, it's a trend. So what is that relationship? So there we go. This this is very practical, meaningful, has an interest of mine. I'm working with a great team that's kind of already in it. Another professor, like I said, you're, you're getting paired for classes. Uh, had an interest in cultural um, um, information and uh, minority reports. So, the, you know, I asked for them to be a part of that team as well. And so, the, boom, you got your committee and then you got the topic. And so now we move into this area. OK. And so the committee, again, it's more just like if I could put analogies like a football team, you know, the head coach is the chair and you have the other coaches, offensive, offensive coach, defense, all that. And they're kind of helping you. I'm the one that makes the plays. They're kind of guiding me in the project. So that's kind of what this is for. Make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do and everything lines up and you get guidance on your project. So when you get past these first two steps, which can take months, all right, they can take months, you get here. And that's where I recently passed. That's why I got this arrow. And what this is, is in this step, after you get okay, you're, you're, you're combing the literature. That's what this literature review is about. You're presenting a rationale, all right? You're developing a hypothesis. What do you what do you expect to discover? And so for mine, a little background, what I learned was basically COVID-19, the pandemic, impacted African-Americans. So this is after I kind of, you know, initial interest. Now we're getting into the work. I learned that African-Americans, even though they were a minority, along with other minorities, experienced the highest disparities. And that word keeps coming up. And that just means the, the biggest differences in infections and death rates and severity of experiencing the pandemic. And um, yet when the, vi when the vaccine was made, they also was the group that had the highest uh, hesitancy. That means... Um, less likely to get the vaccine. You you got the greatest disparities. You you're hit the hardest with the vaccine, but uh, with the with the um, pandemic, but you're also the the least likely to get the vaccine. That's that's a curiosity. That's why is that? I wonder what that is about. Okay, so that's that's where that's what the study comes in that I'm doing. It's just interest trying to figure that out. And I also understand. And I'm giving you very like um, this in a nutshell. African Americans happen to be one of the most spiritual groups as well, racial groups in America. So then it turns into, well, you know, what relationship, again, what role does theology play? Um, and when you look at the past, it, it makes sense. It's like when I'm digging this up and I'm looking into the information, there's systemic racism, there's historical racism, there's the Tuskegee experiment, Henrietta Lack, all these medical examples where African-Americans were exploited or mistreated, right, medically. So, of course, that's still on the black mind when this vaccine comes out, all right? And I also feel like it was a missed opportunity for healthcare providers and faith communities to collaborate uh, and, and provide information on, hey, how do clinical trials go? If that relationship was developed when the vaccine was first 
approved uh, to be made, I think it, it could have helped close some of the disparities and the gaps. And this is where I'm going with it, too, is that institutionally what I'm learning is the church is honestly the only institution historically that has been owned and operated from African-Americans. So, hey, maybe it makes sense to connect with a community that African-Americans trust in order to roll out um, treatment. And so and for me, the project's way bigger than just COVID because it's like down, you know, health disparities period, there's mental health stigmas. I just think it'd be a good idea for healthcare providers and faith communities to do a little more collaboration to work together, to kind of decrease some of the disparities. So that's basically the overview, okay? So we're gonna be looking at what role does theology play in COVID-19 vaccine willingness in African-Americans? So that's the rationale. From my research, um, I'm just learning, I think maybe age may play a role, something that you couldn't get away from with, from the literature and just viewing it yourself is kind of the, the politics behind everything, a very polarized uh, during, during this time uh, when the vaccine came out. So I think that might play a role. I think education or socioeconomic status could play a role as well as to willingness or hesitancy of getting the vaccine. But I'll be honest, I don't know that right now. This is what I'm this will be working on discovering. OK, and so I've I'm in this realm and I'm moving here to to the point of conducting the research. All right. So this is this is the work right here. And each research project has its own research approach. And what I mean by that is um, there's really two legs quantitative or qualitative studies. Quantitative, think more <clears throat> um, math, you know, there's going to be numbers. Qualitative is going to be more, think library, it's going to be more information, in-depth information. And we're going to use focus groups, again, kind of modeling that first project that we went off of. And these are the best project, these are the best approach, this is the best approach to have is a qualitative research when something's new, all right? So, because it's gonna give us direction, it's gonna give us some in-depth information. Each approach has their own little trade-off. But for what we're trying to do, I think it'll make the most sense to get out, and this is called community-based um, participatory research, meaning I'm not gonna be back in the lab writing. I'm gonna get out in the community, I wanna to touch bases, I wanna connect with churches. Um, in the community, and I want to have these focus groups, and I want to talk to uh, predominantly African American churches, and kind of just ask some questions, try to figure around these views where I want to ask more like individually focused, question centered, group. There's a group dynamic when you're uh, working with churches. That's a systems. So we want to see how that plays a role. I want to look at, hey, you know, how can um, faith and health communities collaborate a little more. And then uh, we'll just look at, hey, what's God's, you know, interpretation of this? What is, what is this? What's going on here? And, uh, you know, just views on the vaccine, just straight up. So doing that, all right, with uh, a number of churches, Lord's willing, I'll get some data. All right. This is where I collect. And then when I get the data, we're going to analyze the data, meaning, hey, what does this mean? What does this all mean? We have this information, but what is it telling us? What different themes are popping up? and, show, and um, coming to surface from these answers that we're getting. So then what I'll do is, uh, and this is the next step, so you know, basically recap, you, know, you develop, you secure the committee, you submit the literature review, this is where you're doing a lot of reading and writing, present the rationale, and then you defend it before, or you present it before your committee. They say, okay, also a big part that we missed is IRB, so that's just like the ethics board, making sure everything's solid, all right, we're not going to be uh, mistreating anybody or creating any zombies, right? So that's what the IRB's for. And make sure everything's ethical because if you know about the Tuskegee experiment that happened, and again, that's one of those uh, historical um, black days in America time frames is uh, the, uh, the um, participants did not give consent, all right? So that's an ethics issue. They need to be able to give consent to whether they want to participate in a project or not. And that's where the IRB comes in, is making sure that me as a as a principal investigator has gone through those steps, cross, you know, check the boxes to say, hey, this is how we're gonna do this project, make sure that's ethical. 
And so then, yeah, then we do this, this is the next step four. And then, then after we pull that all together, this is when you call defend. And this could be a number of months from now, a number of months from now. And it just depends on the person's project. Me and another a bunch of colleagues are going through this process as well with their, their topic of interest. So then we have to defend. This is where we present the results and conclusion, get into the dissertation committee. And then you, you know, Lord's willing, you get approved, and then you can you can graduate as long as you complete your coursework and in and, and all this inter time frame too. We're working on internship and all that good stuff. So it's an exciting time. It's a busy time. Um, but you know, we're taking the prayers, but I just kind of want to let you guys know that's what the project is. My next step now is get the IRB approval, get out here, connect with some churches, ask these questions, find it out, and, and gather information. Now, I'll keep you plugged in along the way. Yeah. So, boom. Thanks for listening. And again, you know, like, share, subscribe, comment, and um, yeah, support as, we're, as we grow together. You know, the more you learn, the more you earn. And... I think we'll, we'll bring it back in, bring it back in, yeah. So I, I hope that was helpful to you as it was to me. And again, that was just my way to kind of keep you in the loop along the journey. This is exciting. Um, learn something new every day. And so I'll just be pre presenting that as I go. And uh, yeah, I'll just catch you on the next go around. Peace.